Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be working on implementing bullet holes into our first person shooter project where the bullet holes will disappear after some amount of time and they'll also randomly rotate to make it look more realistic. Okay, so this is a beginner friendly tutorial. So if you have no experience, no worries, we're just going to jump right into it. All right, you guys, I'm just going to be starting in this little first person shooter arena type project that I have. Make sure you go into your project settings and ensure right now that you're on the URP high fidelity render pipeline. Um, you can check it here in the project settings graphics, then find it in your project and click on the high fidelity renderer. And we're going to come down here and add renderer feature and then add decal. Okay. So basically the overview here is we're going to be making bullet holes using this decal feature. Okay. Just so we can play around a little bit, I'm going to add in this first person controller. If you guys want to get that, I'll link it in the description, but basically you just have to go into the package manager here. Uh, you got to find the modular first person controller um, after you import it and then import that into your project. But I'm just throwing this in here. It's not very important. I just want to have it so I can move around a bit so you can see what we got going on here in this project. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create an empty game object here and then call it bullet hole manager. This is just going to manage our script for our bullet holes. So then I'm going to create a scripts folder side of there. Let's create a new script and we can just call this bullet hole manager again. And okay. So we're in here. Let's just delete the start method. We're not going to need it. So we're going to start out by creating a couple variables for ray casting. So ray casting is going to be a lot like just where the bullet is shooting. So it's going to detect where that bullet hits. Then the next thing that we're going to do is put in this input dot get mouse button down zero. So that's when we do a left click. Okay. So when we do a left click, what's going to happen? We're going to get this ray from the camera dot main screen point to ray. It's essentially going to cast a ray where the mouse position is. And then we're, we just made this variable ray cast hit called hit, and we're going to call this function physics dot ray cast. So now if that ray hits something, it will be saved in the hit data here. I'm also going to cache this value in something called current ray equals ray and then current hit equals hit because then we can do a little bit of debugging and we can actually draw a line where this ray is being cast and we should be able to easily see the hit point. Okay, so let's go back into play mode. We need to make sure that we add the bullet hole manager to our bullet hole manager prefab or sorry game object I should say. Um, let's just come in here. We can see our little player object here. I've, I've colored it black. Um, we're going to go in here and you can see in the top screen in the scene view, there's this white line pointing wherever I'm clicking. So that's exactly what I'm talking about. Now that we can see where we're actually shooting, we need to spawn in the bullet hole prefab. So I have a texture here. You guys can download this if you want. I'll link it in the project files, but basically just go into Photoshop and you're going to save this as a PNG file with a transparent background. So just make sure you export it with a transparent background like I have here. Uh, save it just in your project assets. I'm just going to create a folder called textures here so that I can keep track of all these things. And we can just, yeah, name it bullet hole texture one. And then I've already done this. Um, you can see in the bottom right, but I'm going to do it again. I'm going to create a normal map for this texture. So in order to do that, take your transparent layer, add in a white background, and then come in here and merge both layers together. Then you can go up into filter 3d and then generate normal map. So it's a really nice, easy way to do this in Photoshop. Your computer might be thinking for a little bit when it does this, it does take a second. And then if you want, you can tile it a little bit around this, you know, template material. Okay. So then now I'm just going to come in here, export this to PNG again. Um, it is important that this one is a PNG, especially for the normal map. Otherwise it won't work very well. So I just name, name that normal and then let's refresh our assets. And we can now see that in the project. So you do have to do something special for the normal maps for the main texture. You don't have to do anything extra. It should just work, but go into the normal texture and then make sure you change it to normal map in unity and then press apply. So now we're going to create our bullet hole prefab, go into the hierarchy, right click, click rendering, and then decal projector. I'm just going to name this bullet hole prefab. You can name it whatever you want. 
let's take a look at what we just made. You can see there's this game object here and it's actually projecting a white square onto the wall. Um, so if you go into that game object and you look at this um, in the inspector, it's using this decal material. It is a special material that you'll have to use for all decals. So copy this and paste it in your own materials folder. I'm gonna call it just bullet hole. So now we can customize this decal material. I'm gonna just pull in the main texture into this base map or the albedo. Now let's click on the bullet hole prefab in the hierarchy. And what we're gonna do is drag in this bullet hole material that we just made instead of the decal material. So there's a couple problems. We can't really see anything, but that's because one, we're rotated 90 degrees and we're actually projecting down. So if we increase this projection depth, we can now see our bullet hole and we can also see this white arrow pointing in the direction of the projection. So what I wanna do here is actually rotate it the other way so that it's against the wall. So we change that rotation from 90 to zero. Um, and now you can see that as I pull it along this axis, along the projection axis, um, it will disappear if it goes out of range. So now I'm gonna change the projection depth to one. You do want this to be quite small for something like a bullet hole. Okay, so I'm actually gonna change the width and the height here because I think our bullet hole is just way too big. And let's pull it over by the player. I think we could even go down a little bit more here. Now, the next thing that I wanna show is if we go into play mode, let's check out this bullet hole. And it actually does not look like a hole very much at all right now. So it's completely flat. Uh, the reason for this is we have not added in a normal map. So let's go find our bullet hole material and then drag in the bullet hole normal texture. Now, if we go into play mode and look at this, it looks much, much better. It actually looks like an indent and it's responding to lights. You can see kind of reflections inside of it. If you guys are hearing this, that means you've found the video's secret halfway point. You are now eligible for exclusive Discord server perks in which you can help promote your own content. All you have to do is join the Discord server below and then DM me Secret Society. Finally, if you guys are enjoying the content on this channel, please remember to subscribe and turn on notifications. Okay, so we have a good start on our bullet hole prefab. Let's go create a folder called prefabs and then we can drag this bullet hole prefab in there. And then I'm just gonna delete it from the scene. So we'll be loading this in script. So let's go into our bullet hole manager script, open that on up. Okay, so let's write a little bit more code. We're gonna serialize a couple fields so that we have access to them in the inspector. The first one is gonna be our bullet hole prefab so that we can just drag that in easily and have access to it. Then our second one is gonna be a bullet hole container. So that will hold all of our bullet hole prefab so it doesn't clutter our hierarchy. Now let's go into here when we actually get a physics raycast hit and we're gonna instantiate our bullet hole prefab. So that's all I'm doing here. And we're gonna spawn it at this hit dot point. So that's where the ray actually hits a wall. And this quaternion dot identity is just kind of standard for rotation. Don't worry about that too much. You don't know what it is. And then we have our spawned object and we're gonna set the transforms parent to the bullet hole container. So that's gonna get it into that bullet hole container prefab so we don't clutter our scene. Then we're gonna drag in the bullet hole prefab and also the bullet hole manager as our container. And then we can press play. And now we can see that these are all spawning correctly, exactly as we want them to. Now there's a problem that I avoided just a second ago. It's if we fire in a different direction, we notice that the decal projector is not rotating properly. So obviously this is not the intended behavior. We want to actually rotate the decal projector properly. So we're gonna have to go back in the script and make some adjustments. So we're just gonna actually write only a couple lines of code here. It's not too bad. We're gonna make this quaternion target rotation variable and what we're gonna be setting up here is using this internal function to quaternion, which is look rotation. So you can actually get the ray dot direction here and you can create a rotation for a different game object such that it looks in the exact same direction that the ray is looking in. Then we just go into our spawned object dot transform dot rotation and we're gonna set that equal to target rotation. And now our decal projector prefab should be facing the same direction as our raycast. Let's go into play mode and we can check this out. I'm just gonna shoot in a bunch of different, different directions and we can see it's looking much, much better. However, there is a new problem that we've encountered. If we look at this texture really closely, you can actually see that it's getting cut off. It took me a little while to figure out what was actually going on here, 
but the prefab is spawning exactly where the wall is and that's causing the texture to get clipped a little bit. So now we need to go fix this in code. So what we need to do is bring the spawned bullet hole prefab closer to us than the wall. So we're going to start out with something um, called the position multiplier. At least that's what I'm going to call it here. Uh, it'll be a little more obvious what this is actually doing in a second. Uh, and then we're going to create three different variables, spawn X, spawn Y, and spawn Z. So this is where the prefab is actually going to spawn. Um, previously, it was spawning right at the hit point, uh, but we're adjusting it such that it comes towards us along the ray direction just a little bit. And the position multiplier is going to control how far that distance is. So now we're going to just going to take spawn position, create a new vector three, set it to the spawn X, spawn Y, and spawn Z. And then we can come into the spawned object here. And when we instantiate it, we spawn it at spawn position instead. So now if we go into play mode, we try this again and it doesn't work. Um, yeah, this was another issue. And now we're on the exact opposite end. The projection distance is exactly the distance that we're spawning it away. And so this is exactly why I made that uh, scale factor that we can adjust. Remember, I, I set it to one and we can see the projection depth is also equal to one. So if we were to set this projection depth to two, you'll find that it actually works. So now all of our bullet holes are spawning properly uh, and all is well. So I, I actually don't like having a projection distance of, or depth of two. It's a little bit too much and some objects can kind of get in the way. So I'm going to turn that back down to one. And then instead, I'm going to change this position multiplier to 0.5. So you guys can play around with those values uh, for your projects, but that's what I'm going to choose for now. So, um, you know, coming back into uh, play mode, we can see this once again. Uh, everything appears to be working fine. Um, things are spawning a little bit off the wall towards the player as we expected. Okay, so we're going to add in another effect in script, which is disappearing bullet holes. So obviously you want the bullet holes to disappear after some amount of time, um, at least in most cases. So here we're going to just set up a variable, uh, we're going to serialize it, and then we're going to call it destroy delay. And then let's scroll down. And you know, this is really easy uh, command in Unity, we're just going to do this destroy command, we're going to do the spawned object prefab, and then we're going to put in the destroy delay and then Unity will just take care of this for us. It knows to destroy the game object after the destroy delay amount of time. So if we go into the bullet hole, manager we can actually find this destroy delay value i'm going to set it to five seconds uh, and then let's test it out so we fire a few uh, bullet holes against the wall here and they should and they're starting to go now so you can see that just worked real easily so we've already spent so much time in this that i thought we might just get one more little effect thrown in here that's going to make this much more polished so if you look at these bullet holes right they're all rotated the exact same amount in the exact same way it, it just doesn't look good. It doesn't look realistic. So let's go ahead and try to fix that. Okay, so this is actually going to be just a fairly simple one line of code in order to do this. The idea is we want to randomly rotate our prefab, you know, between 0 and 360 degrees along the Z axis. So we do spawned object dot transform dot rotate and then we do vector three dot forward. That's its Z axis. And then we do random dot range 0 F to 360 F. And that should take care of it. So let's go back into the game. Let's shoot a few bullets and you can see now it's properly randomly rotating. To me, this just looks so much better and brings this from an amateur effect to a pretty professional one. That's it, you guys. Remember to subscribe below if you found this tutorial helpful. Peace.